Tonight, we are finishing our series of the kingdom, the kingdom. It's the final portion and finally our third section of this, and it's uh, our purpose, yours and my purpose in the kingdom of God. You know, throughout this series of the kingdom, we've kind of deconstructed our misconceptions, our understandings of what the kingdom of God looks like or how it's supposed to look or what we thought it should look like or be. And we're looking at what God's kingdom really is from the beginning. The first part when we did and we talked about was a present reality that God wanted to awaken. He wanted to equip, restore our hearts and our minds to the understanding that there is a real presence of his kingdom here and now for you and me. And we can be a part of that. Second week, we talked about the king. That was last two weeks ago. Talking about the idea that you have to know who the king is if you're going to be a part of this kingdom. The power of God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, what he has done. And the question of have we tried to replace him with other kings of our lives? Have we bowed our knees to others instead of our Lord, our Savior? Now, all these are connected with one another because they build upon each other like bricks what the kingdom of God truly is. And tonight, we're talking about purpose. People are constantly searching for purpose in life. And this is more than just a message on living a purposeful, earthly life. We're talking about something deeper than that tonight. See, when we align ourselves with the awe-inspiring King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we begin an everlasting journey of purpose. And that's what we're discussing this evening. You're going to take just literally two minutes. And I know when I ask this question, you're going to be like, I can't figure that out in two minutes. You're going to take two minutes, and this is what I want you to do. You choose one person next to you, to your left, to your right, in front of you, behind you, whatever it is. Okay, and at your funeral... If your life could only be described with two words, what would you want them to be? All right? Your life could only be described with two words. Yeah. We'll meet back in an hour. No, I'm kidding. Uh, All right, ready? Go. Um, All right, just start throwing them out there. Throw them out there. Let me hear. Just say it. A couple of words. I've just heard Mughaikini. This is Swahili for... No. Humble servant, joyful noise, noise. kind-hearted, lights out, out. (laughs) dead. (laughs) I'll remember that, Bradley. I remember that. You're three years older, going before I am. Uh, What? Memory of love. Uh, No. No conjunctions do not count. Okay. Ambitious. Giver. Cool. Well, obviously, I know that's a super deep question to ask in like a two-minute response. Some of you might have had it right on your mind. Tip of your tongue. It's like, no, I know exactly what it is. Because maybe you've been living in that way. Maybe you've been living with that purpose already in your mind and in your heart of specifically what you know you are moving towards. And that's great. And others of you, maybe you're like, I have no idea. I have no idea. And then others of you sit there and you're like, what's the right answer? Right? What's the right answer? I'm in uh, a church right now. I need to say the right answer. So it's like, you know, fed, those doesn't count, in doesn't count, need. Right? Fed those in need. It's like, that's so good of you. You have such a great heart. You know? Reach the lost, you know, all that stuff. I'm not mocking those things. I'm just saying we battle. We try to think, wow, that's a heavy question. What does that look like? Well, purpose. The definition of it is the reason for which something exists or is done, made, or used. People are constantly asking the question, what is the purpose of life? Perhaps the most asked question, whether said, verbalized, or not, We live daily, and many times people's actions, the evidence of their actions, show they're asking that question. What is the purpose of life, my life, our life? HuffPost Healthy Living gives us five steps that reveal your life's purpose. I'm going to read them. 
Back off and tune inward. Learn from your choices and consequences. Get on the path. Doesn't say what path. Doesn't matter what path. Just get on some sort of path. Stretch yourself. Pursue it with love. There's another online article. It says 10 questions to ask yourself if you're looking for life's purpose. Listen, you, if you type that in, in Google, any search engine, you will get a plethora of just people sharing their wisdom, their ideas, their thoughts. Some vulgar and some bad and some good and some you don't know. Here's 10 questions. Am I doing what I love? Am I surrounded by people that I care about? Am I happy with where I am? Is there more I can do? Do I feel satisfied? How do I want to be remembered? What makes me happy? How do I look at today? Can I have an impact? What am I waiting for? Now listen, these are good. I'm not mocking these things. These are good attempts to find a type of purpose. And I would be lying to you if I said you couldn't live a good life guided by these questions. But all these sentences, statements, these things they're giving us as guidance and direction, they have one main thing in common. Me, myself, I. Hear what I'm saying? All about me. And that makes sense because really that's the only place humanity left it on our own. That's the only place we can look to for these types of answers. But there's a place in our soul that screams for purpose. That our talents, our skills, our successes and even relationships cannot extend a relieving and helpful hand. A man by the name of Ralph Barton, he was one of the top cartoonists of the nations. He left this note pinned to his pillow before taking his own life. I have had few difficulties, many friends, great successes. I have gone from wife to wife, from house to to house, visited great countries of the world, but I am fed up with inventing devices to fill up 24 hours of the day. And then he took his life. I mean, he had success, experiences, family, lots of friends, everything that on paper, and when we talk about that even those questions, the 10 things to live by, the five ways to find purpose, we would say you would find it, you would be fulfilled, but yet still, still empty. Empty enough to take his own life. But let me read to you another quote of a man's last words before his death on the opposite side of the spectrum. A man by the name of John Wesley, many of you know about, great preacher and revivalist in the 1700s, godly man, spoke in England and America, spread the revival and work of God. These were his final words. It says, with all the remaining strength he had cried out, the best of all is God is with us. Then lifting up his dying arm in token of victory and raising his feeble voice with a holy triumph, not to be expressed, again repeated the heart reviving words, the best of all is God with us is with us took his final breath polar opposites one alone left to their own depravity hopelessness the other with his final breath declaring god is with me because wesley when asked about purpose this is the man who lived by this statement he said i want the whole of christ for my savior the whole Bible for my book, the whole church for my fellowship, and the whole world for my mission field. I'm reminded of another man's last words, a man by the name of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. During World War II, he was taken in prisoner to the Nazis. He actually penned a book, The Cost of Discipleship, in prison while he was there. He wrote many great works, theological works. He actually had a bright, bright future he could have achieved. He lived in New York at, and then felt in his heart. He grew up in Germany, moved to New York, was successful, was teaching all this, and then he decided, I'm going to go back to help my country, Germany. And there he's taken. And at age 39, as he's walking to his death to be hung, 
he says these last words that were recorded to a fellow inmate. This is the end. For me, the beginning of life. One man sitting there about to take his life, saying, I've experienced everything life can offer, and now I desire death. And yet another man walking to his death, saying, this is just the beginning of life. See, only one can extend their reach into the inner depths of man and his soul. Only God can awaken the eternal purposes we have been designed to achieve. See, when we realize that God is the author and origin of our very being, we begin an everlasting journey of purpose. We have to start with the idea of who formed us. I hope you guys realize when, I, when, I, when I'm speaking and sharing, what I'm wanting to do many times is kind of deconstruct how we view something and help build up a new perspective on how we look and understand. Because I find that our generation many times doesn't just like to be told what to do. If I told you to stand up right now, some of you would be like, why well, is you to stand up? And others would be like, yes, sir. <laughs> why? Why do I got to stand? Because someone's about to stab you in the hiney. You'd be like, oh, you got a reason. I don't know where that came from. It just happened. Be careful. Turn around. Who's that weirdo back there? No, I'm kidding. Um, but you want to know why. Why? So this is why. Our genuine and detailed purpose can only be discovered in the one who has formed and designed you and me. The psalmist, David, says it great in Psalm 139, verses 13 through 18. Listen to this. He's talking about God. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Best of all, God is with us. See, God not only sees the invisible, he can penetrate the inaccessible. He's the great operative and the author of every detail of our being. But see, if if you build on the idea of not having a creator, then your source of purpose originates and comes from some cosmic accident or coincidence. So no creator then, you're caught in a a world and a life. Your actions are random, accidental in one sense. Your choices as well. Following that logic, that's what it comes to. Because you came from something random. You came from something that was an accident. You came from something that was coincidental. And you don't make any type of real eternal impact. There's really no purpose besides looking to yourself. Limiting your own purpose to what you yourself can fathom, what you yourself can do. Or you just live life and say, let's live it well. YOLO. You only live once. Hashtag it. Ridiculous. I hate that statement. I'm not even going to go into it right now. Let's talk about it afterwards. You got tattooed on your neck? I'm going to scrape it off. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I won't scrape it off. I'll burn it off. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Come on. Don't, I hope no one does have a tattoo on your head. It's all right. No worries. Um, but you can only dive so deep. You can only dive so deep into what you feel your purpose should be until finally it drowns you. Do we not see that all the time? We see people who have this earthly purpose they achieve everything we look to and have posters up in our room or in our mind of this would be awesome if i could just get this enough of this this much fame this much money this much success this type of family this type of wife this type of background whatever it is this degree all these things 
we want, and yet we dive, we dive, we dive, we dive, we dive, we dive, we dive till we drown. Because there is a place in your soul and my soul that cannot be reached by our hands, nor the hands of man that reactivates and makes alive our true purpose. You are not an accident. You're not the result of some sort of cosmic coincidence and accident. The very hands that formed the cosmos were the ones that made you. The very breath of the one who spoke life into existence is the breath of life that's inside of you and inside of me. Our genuine and true purpose was and is intentional. Because we have the hands of a creator who works with purpose. See, God created us. We read about that in the book of Genesis. Yet we also see that sin enters and it corrupts us. It separates you and me from God. It corrupts our soul. Don't believe it? Look around. Don't believe it? Think back on that quote I just said about someone who took their life. Don't believe it? Look around and see people hurting themselves every day. Even those who it looks unintentional. Emotionally abusing themselves. Sin corrupts us. But then Jesus, he reinstates, he awakens the dead man inside of you and me. And God's hands can now reactivate and reestablish and bring alive our genuine and true purpose. And we begin this beautiful process of rediscovering who we are, who we were meant to be, what we were meant to do. See, if you don't know what the purpose of something is, then you either abuse it or neglect it. See, if you don't know what a cell phone or a remote control is supposed to do, you might use it to hit a nail into something. And you're going to get frustrated. You're going to break the remote or the cell phone, unless you have an otter box. No, you're going to break it, okay? You're going to be frustrated, abuse it, neglect it. Okay, what about a ridiculous one? Uh, if you don't know the use of a toilet, you might think how awesome someone put a freshwater well in my, in my house, and I'm going to drink from it. It's time to confess if you've done it. Sick. You're sick. Jeff, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> it's out. It's out. Um, I have a fun story. I was in Africa with our team. We were out in the bush. Uh, and uh, we, without going into detail, our stomachs were constantly upset because of what we were eating. All right? It's a man team, eight of us. So we're out in the bush. We're in a village. And we see a, a hole in the ground. And that's normally where you do what you have to do. And so my team is like lined up one after another, right? So I get done, I'm walking out, my team's just in their lineup, and the missionary comes up with the lady who is a part of that village, and he says to me, Stephen, why is your team going to the bathroom in their kitchen? As I turn around, I see my tallest team member. He's like, I'm like, put your hand down oh my goodness, we're so sorry, we apologize, we tell them we saw a hole. We didn't realize that that hole was actually where you discard some of your food stuff and the other hole was for other things that you put in there and uh, where you do a fire. We're in the middle of their kitchen. But we didn't know the purpose of those holes. We thought we did and we definitely abused it. Okay. <laughs> but on a more serious note, what about the purpose of relationships? We don't know the purpose of what a relationship, what a marriage should look like. We're going to abuse it. We see that constantly. The abuse of marriages, relationships. Maybe you've been a product of it. Because we don't understand the purpose. Talents, family, goes all the way. Yes, from the dumb little things to the very serious things that define who we are. If we don't know the purpose, then we abuse or neglect. God is our source of purpose. 
See, if we understand this, then we'll properly be able to build our priorities. We'll, we'll have that trickle-down effect when we understand that God is the author. He's the originator of who we are that he reaches that place inside of us, that he brings that place of purpose, true purpose, alive inside of us. It's out of that that all these other things will line up. Skill sets, professions, vocations. See, I hate the lie when someone thinks, if I give my life to God, if I fully surrender it and say I want God's purposes, he's going to send me to Africa to that bathroom kitchen where I'll live the rest of my life. Or he's going to make me like you, Pastor Stephen. I'm going to have to be a pastor. Ah, okay, it's awesome. I hope, I hope it's not a bad example to you guys. So, or it means I have to do this or that, and suddenly all my skill sets, my musical abilities, my talents, my, my, my social interactions, my dreams, my passions will all be stifled and destroyed. What a lie from the enemy. What a lie from the enemy. See, when you access God's hands and you say, Lord, You are my source of purpose. Your vocation, your skill sets, your talents, your passions will extend much further than just your life. They'll have an eternal extension and a deep, real fulfillment. Don't listen to the lie that God doesn't celebrate your uniqueness because he does, because he knows you. Because like we read in Psalms how he knit you together, every part of who you are, from the silly things to the serious things, to your personalities, to your strengths. When you place those things in God's hands, it's only going to get stronger. We can't build the walls of our life with purpose until we have the foundation that is built with his purpose. It's the example that Jesus talks about when he talks about two men, one who built their home on the sand. The rain, the weather, the difficulties, all those things happened and what took place, it crumbled and fell. But the man who built his house on the rock, the foundation, the walls he put up on top of that foundation, they stood. You wonder why we look around and we see people who seem to have it all, or people who are on that track, and then all of a sudden, in a moment, we found out something so tragic. They took their life. They're raging alcoholic. They're addicted to drugs. They're in constant relationships that are toxic. They're hurting themselves. They're hopeless. Because their foundation is not built on that purpose. See, tonight, I'm not going to be able to bring us from a 1 to a 10 of the 10 things to do to find that purpose. No, this is the beginning. This is to awaken you and me to a journey of discovering our purpose. There's an ultimate purpose that we have when we link with one another as Christians. We want to see God's kingdom come. We want to see sin destroyed. We want to see man reunited with God once again, the heavens and earth restored and recreated. No more pain, sorrow, or death. Jesus glorified and everyone knows that he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. That is our ultimate purpose. But this is a grand narrative. It's a story that began before our existence and will continue beyond our earthly lives that we are part of here and now. In one sense, we're but a small stroke in an entire canvas and painting. But we are a vital and important one. If you talk to any artist, they'll tell you every stroke is so important to the final product. Every little stroke. If you ever go up to a painting really close, they let you. You know, at museums, I'm like, ah. All right, I'm going to rip this thing off the wall, but screw it in. How do they do that? You look at every little stroke when you go up close to it, you see the importance of it. It's amazing. If you mix red and blue together, those two strokes, it'll make the color magenta. Say that with me, magenta. Ready? One, two, three. Magenta. Isn't that a great, that's a happy word. Transforms the very colors. Every stroke is so important and plays a specific role. 
So in the overall and ultimate purpose between humanity and God, each specific stroke plays a role in the outcome of his story and of this grand, beautiful painting. But within that, you and I also have a specific purpose. Paul gives a great analogy of it when he talks about the body. There's hands, there's feet, there's a neck, there's head, there's eyes, ears, nose, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. (laughs) Some of you were going there already. And you were doing it as I was saying it. (laughs) So well trained. Such a weird song. Um... Our child will not sing. No, she'll sing it. She'll sing it. But he says they all do specific things. They're all unique, yet they all work together as one united. God has put unique things inside of you and me that he wants to awaken inside of us. That only his creative hands, his hands that know us, every part of who we are. You look at someone who created a chair, They're going to know what every little part, the tiniest screw, why it is there, what it does, its importance, every part. Only our creator knows everything you and I can do and what we can be and how we can play our specific roles in his ultimate story. And it's beautiful. So tonight, that's what I want to do. Awaken our journey of purpose that extends beyond the grave where God is glorified where God is given all the glory that when people look at your lives and they see what you're doing and you're not throwing away everything and say I have to go to Bible college now Bible college is awesome do it or I have to do this no you could be pursuing business you could be an entrepreneur you could be an artist you could do music whatever it is but being the best at it because you're connected with the one who created you to be that and in that making sure you glorify him and find him as your source you will begin a life that extends far beyond even your own but walls must be broken this is what I feel in closing There's a picture I saw. This picture is that just a person inside a room. It's almost like that room didn't have any walls, but then all of a sudden it's like these thick, like paper walls started going up around them, around them, around them. This is what I saw in my heart. You and I just sitting there and these walls going up all around us. And it's like the enemy has created these walls around you. He's deceived you and me to be at a place of limitation and even a place in lack of purpose. Maybe lies. Maybe these walls symbolize lies in your life. You were a mistake. You were unintentional. You were an accident. You might even be saying, my parents didn't even want me. I was a mistake. I was an accident. Well, let me read to you again then Psalm. Where God says, I knew you even before you were in your mother's womb, before you were in her belly. I knew you, who you were, all that would take place in your life. And I love you. I knit you together. But maybe that wall has gone up. Or maybe you've just disregarded the revelation of God as your creator. You've fallen into a thinking that there's actually no such thing as purpose. And so you're curled up in that room and those walls keep going up. Or you have no influence. You can't do anything. You've tried and you've failed. Or you've done all you can do. And there are walls going up that are belittling and negating your purpose. And the things that God wants to do in and through you. You've forgotten You've neglected, you've abused the revelation and the genuine truth of God's purpose for your life. Listen, this this message speaks to my heart too. Maybe you've had a limited scope. You've settled for something shallow, what the world can give you. Maybe you've accepted a lie. 
but I really believe that God wants to awaken the power he has given you and me. I'm going to invite Brad and Rebecca up here as I close and read this portion of scripture. I'm just going to ask that you close your eyes because in that story of just that picture of these walls going up, it's like you just kept curling. You and I just kept, we just kept curling up, curling up, curling up, and this, these walls were up, and, and we didn't even realize that these walls were just paper, but it felt so real. felt like we couldn't see beyond that. And I want to read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. And so just close your eyes and listen to these words. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. His incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. And as that, that picture continued, and you can open your eyes, as that picture continued where we were down, and if for me it was me, I was down, and these walls were up. And I was looking around, and I just saw walls, and almost a place of hopelessness. What is my purpose? Maybe this is all it is. Maybe this is all it's meant to be. It's like as if suddenly the hands of God enveloped me. It was like I had a revelation moment where I thought upon who God is, my creator, the one who put things inside of me that I wasn't even opening my own life and self up to, that his hands surrounded and held me. And in this revelation moment, when I woke up from it, I realized the power like we read in Ephesians that you and I have in Jesus Christ, the same power that raised him from the dead. And it was like I just jumped through and broke those walls. In my own power? No. But in the revelation and the power of Jesus Christ. And suddenly, looking around, it was like, there's much work to do. But I'm equipped. I'm equipped because I know who is with me. God is with us. We can be a kingdom of people working and warring in the power of God and his kingdom, a people united by one purpose and obedient to the specific purposes he has for us. So let's stand tonight. And as we worship the Lord, let's begin to encounter either a rediscovery or maybe a freedom moment for you in your own life if you have never given your life to Jesus. You've lived in that shallow place of purpose. You've looked for it and your hands have reached as far as they could go and you're on the end of your own string. Let his hands in. Let the hands of God wrap around you and let the hands of God rip the scales back that have blinded you, that have limited you and what you can do for his kingdom because we are in a world that is in need of the power of God and his kingdom. He'll be glorified. His power and love will be known. And we can play the sacred role of telling his story with the lives that we live with purpose because of him. So Jesus, we invite your hands, oh God. Deepen our understanding. Free us from the lies that have made us and held us captive. Let us be a people who see your kingdom come and your will be done. A people who stand up and live with purpose because of who our creator is. That we break down the walls that once held us in. 
The walls that once encompassed our lives, that held us down, that limited what we could do, where we felt like our reach could go only so far. Let us become the ones because we have tasted of you, Jesus Christ. We've accepted, we've linked arms with you and hearts with you, Lord God. Now we too can break down the walls in the lives of those who are around us, that we would be a people with your power and your purpose to live in the present reality of your kingdom and to bear the banner of you as our king. In Jesus' name, amen.